very big welcome to everyone and here I am with another 12 by 12 layout and this time it's featuring my gorgeous little daughter and I wanted to photograph or not photograph I wanted to scrap these photos because I absolutely loved the dress she was wearing so for the background paper I chose this gorgeous graphic 45 paper and it's from the love notes collection and the background paper is called poetic postage so I mainly chose this background paper because of the colour. I thought that it would contrast beautifully with the dress that she was wearing and also the other papers that I'll be using. So I will say up front that for this layout, uh, all the papers I'm using are from the Love Notes collection and from Graphic 45. I will leave a link in the description below to Auntie Vera's Scrap and Craft where you can get your hot little hands on this gorgeous sets of paper. I did things a little bit differently for this layout in the sense that I chose one of my photos to be the highlight photos and it's that centre one that you see there and I gave it a small tiny mat and for those interested the paper I used for that matting is as I said earlier from Graphic 45 the Love Note collection and it's called Musical Masterpiece. Drawing inspiration from the dress she is wearing I then picked this other paper and this one's called standing ovation and it's got these lovely musical notes and love hearts on it as well and I absolutely loved it and I love the contrast with the the background paper and the dress that she's wearing and really a lot of the inspiration as I was picking my papers came from her dress I was going to put my photos facing straight on like I normally do but this time around I thought that things looked better on an angle then I inspiration hit me I should say and I decided I was going to draw a love heart and sort of frame the photos within a love heart which is what I did and it took me a numerous amounts or numerous attempts I should say to get this love heart right but I got there then I decided oh no I'm going to do some stitching so I got my little pokey tool and I did all these little holes and I decided to do some chain stitching I'll just give a quick tutorial for those that don't know how to do a chain stitch. If you push your needle through the back of your paper on the very first hole, so there's the back of my paper, first hole, push it up. Then you push your needle back down through that same hole from the right side of your paper and it will form a loop. When you get that loop, I tend to hold it with my thumb, but you do it whatever's comfortable for you. And the back of the paper, you come up from your second hole. So there you are, second hole coming up and it forms a loop. So I push my thread back to the left hand side and I go down that same hole that I came out from. So it forms another loop and then from the back you push your needle through to the next hole and you just keep doing that. So I always remember that, you know, the hole that you came out of is the hole that you poke straight into to form your loop and at the back you go you move on to the next hole if that makes any sense i will warn you this does take a considerable amount of time so you if, if you are in a hurry do not do any stitching especially a big love heart like this but i actually enjoy i enjoy stitching i guess and i like to do it watching TV with the family so that way I am part of the family but at the same time I'm doing something productive and getting in some of my scrappy time. Okay so after a lot of time sitting on the lounge watching telly my love heart is complete and I love how it looks. This gorgeous chipboard is from Graphic 45 and it's from the same Love Notes collection and I love the chipboard so in the end I chose to go with the little chipboards that are down on the oh, right hand corner and I keep those little ones and that butterfly stays but the chipboard that's on the top right hand corner didn't actually make it into the layout. The collection also comes with this gorgeous sticker set but I'm not a big fan of stickers in the sense that I change my mind a lot. So what I do with my stickers is I stick them down onto some scrap cardstock and fussy cut them and that way I can move them around. Once again I drew inspiration from my little girl's dress and the center of her flowers has this gorgeous deep red color. So on this watercolor paper I tried to replicate that color and I'm just using my watercolors and 
no word of a lie it took me several attempts to get the right shade I just kept mixing colors adding a bit of this adding a bit of that until I got the shade that I wanted and I absolutely loved the end result and uh, but it did take a considerable amount of time of just keeping and trying and I kept drying the paint and adding another layer but eventually I got there and as you can see, it, got, it gave me this gorgeous red background. So then I wanted to use this gorgeous stamp set. It's from Kaiser Craft and it's called Golden Grove. And absolutely perfect flowers to go with this layout because they were very similar to the flowers on my little girl's dress. I did stamp out my flowers a number of times and I also stamped out a few of the roses which I'm glad I did because I did use them on the layout and I absolutely loved the way it looked in the end. Now I will admit the stamp set does come with the matching dies but for the life of me I couldn't work out which way was up with those dies and I gave up and I did some fussy cutting. But then I must, you know, I don't know if I'm admitting or, or what but Maybe psychologically, I didn't want the die sets to work for me because I I, get, I think I'm one of these sick people that actually enjoys fussy cutting. I actually find it really relaxing. So maybe subconsciously, that's why the dies weren't working for me. But if anyone knows of a tutorial of how to get your dies the right way up to match with your stamps, please let me know because I struggled. And, you know, we all have our failures and I guess that's mine. Now, back to the layout, I got out my beautiful Inca Gold. Uh, it's a red colour, it's a beautiful red colour. It's called Laverot. And in my endless supply of stash, I found these gorgeous wood veneers. And my gosh, I just thought this was going to give me the right title. So the wood, wood veneers that I had had the word awesome and amazing. No idea where they came from, but... They were in my stash, so I used them. And the title lands up being My Awesome Amazing Girl. And just for a bit of a highlight around the edges, I've used that same Inca Gold Loverette. And with a paintbrush, I just went around it just to give it a smudge of red all around and just tie everything in with the rest of the layout. And I absolutely loved how it turned out or how it all looks. And so far, my title's reading awesome and amazing so back to my wood veneers and I have all these letters there and I decided to spell out the word the word my girl and I used another one of my Inca golds and my fascination with Inca gold I'm going to blame it all on Auntie Vera's scrap and craft she introduced me to this product Inca gold and I'm in love I use it for nearly everything but this one here is called charcoal and it's a lovely, It's a, I would call it a soft black. So I'm just painting my wood veneers and my title lands up being my awesome, amazing girl. And she really is. I mean, she's a handful, but I love her and she is awesome. She's amazing and she is my little girl. So I'm really, really happy with how this layout turned out. I'm going to leave you now with some close-ups so you can actually see the detail and the colour involved. And I would love it if you subscri subscribe to my little channel, if you haven't already done so, that is, and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload. Anyway, take care, everybody, and till next time.